Hello and welcome to Tim's Desk. Today we have got an inbox review of the new Tacoms 135 M47 slash G pattern. Uh, now this is a totally new tool kit. Um, this will be very much a huge jump from the old Tamiya pattern that was available. Um, I've, I had a little flick through before I started this video and it looks quite interesting. Um, it does say two in one on the box. Um, that gives you two different types of turret. You get the M47 turret and the M47 slash G turret. Uh, when I go through the instructions, I'll show you the difference on there. Um, this gives you quite a few different types of schemes in this one. Uh, you get one American and then you get another four, I think it is four or five different uh, schemes after that. Um, so it's good that they just haven't chucked just a load of green olive drab types in there. They've given you a good broad spectrum of use of this tank um, so you can get really creative with the camo schemes in there. Um, so let's get the box open and see what's in there. Okay, so let's start with the instructions and the small decal sheet that comes with it as well. Uh, it gives you, you've got A, B, C, no D, and it goes E and F on there. I'd imagine maybe this little small section here where they haven't got anything is the D section on there. Um, nice looking little set of decals on there. They're still in the bag. I'm gonna leave them in there for now. Uh, that is a the American and a German and then several different ones from Middle East. Uh, and then there's another two on there we can definitely get specifics out from the instruction on. Um, Tackham decals are good quality on those ones so I'm not too worried about them. Uh, so the instruction booklet, it's an A4 uh, stapled booklet on there for long ways instructions. So you open up first page you get you get start getting some markings straight away you can have a little look at. Uh, so these these are some of the options. So there's the M47. This is for the M47 A production Detroit tank arsenal USA 1951. So there's your standard olive drab version as would come out from the United States with your normal uh, star on there. Uh, next one along is now the M47G. Now this is the only G variant in this booklet. The difference between the M47 and the M47G is the uh, grab handles on the turret and the smoke dispensers. Let me try and get this better on there. You can just make out the smoke dispenser. It'll probably, it'll probably be easier to show you once the instructions on the black and white pictures than on, on that one. I'll quickly flick to the back just to show you the other markings as well, as we started with markings at the beginning of the book. Uh, now on this page here we have uh, Battle of Asal Uttar on September the 10th, 1965. This is the Indo-Pakistan War. Uh, so this is where the Indian versus Pakistan uh, war happened over in 1965. So that looks to be an olive drab with, which looks to be, let me make sure I get this correct, old rust color with some markings on the turret. So quite good options for uh, something, something definite looking there. Next one, which I quite like, that's a good looking markings, that one. This is M47 South Korean Army, 1980s. Uh, I do like the markings on that. You, you'll notice when you look at the Korean South Korean stuff, they actually are quite colourful, which is nice. Uh, another good colourful one here. We've got the M47 Jordanian Army, Six Days War, 1967. So yeah, I'm sure you could quite easily find some really good images of destroyed or in-use versions of that tank on there. And the last one in the line, we have the M47 Croatian Bosnian Herzegovina, I don't know how to say that correctly, 1993 which is another olive drab with, which looks to be old rust and, am I gonna correct and say that 61? I can't try and find this, but they're, they're looking for the numbers, looking for the numbers. Oh, I can't find the light color markings on there. Okay, yeah, sorry, 61, there you go, spot on and sand yellow on there. So some good color options. For this, not just your standard olive drab, some nice looking colour options. Um, st instructions start with, please read before assembly. Don't stick your fingers together. Don't put paint on your hands. Uh, don't swallow the decals. Don't cut your fingers off. Uh, so the usual sort of warnings they give you on there. Next page up, we have the parts breakdown 
on there, so we get two for the wheels. Uh, top hole, uh, what looks to be barrel and final drive assemblies, parts for the turret, uh, handles, turret, tracks, lower hole, uh, clear parts, decals, turret, and then these parts here, which looks to be quite interesting, are jigs for not just the uh, uh, susp suspension, torsion arms, uh, but also the tracks as well. So that's a very good point from Tacom. Well done for that one. So in total you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sprues, the two bits of turret, the lower hole, and your two bits. So you get a nice, nice amount in there, not a not, uh, overly heavy build, not hundreds and hundreds of parts, and multiple layers, just there will be a nice easy build to, to crack through on this one. So as with most tanks, start with the lower hole on there. You've got your main lower hole, your final drive points. Start and putting on your but the bump stops, the suspension, return rollers for all those parts, returns and shock absorbers. Now once you put all the arms on, this is where you get your jig. And you can line your jig up with all the sides so they're all at the same level. Because that was one thing with the old Tamirs, you used to have to sit the uh, the the body uh, the lower hole on something then you used to have to glue all the suspension legs and push them all down on the onto they were touching um which it was doable um uh, but to have a jig out made out of plastic nice little touch and it, i say it'll double up as something else later on um what's also good with this type of system is you can pose this tank uh going across rough ground quite easily you can set these suspension arms where you need them to be so that's quite a good point for that one um but you'd have to do something maybe do something with the tracks we'll go through that a bit very soon swap it over start with the next side same again put your suspension arms put your jig on and there is a left and a right jig for this uh make up 14 road wheels make up your two rear drive sprockets So, put your final drives on. Now, this is where you use your jig. You put your uh, you put your front idler and the rear drive sprocket. Now, you can put the tracks on using the jig. Glue them so they're in these curved section there. You can then remove that, put that onto the model, and then stick your lower section in. Now, the lower section of the track is one long straight piece. So, if you did want to do this showing across rough ground, you would look at having to get... Um, some workable tracks, probably most likely frills for that sort of job. Um, but it, 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 the suspension gives give you the options, unfortunately the, the tracks don't. These are, the, all of these American tanks did love, run live tracks, so that means they were always taut and they didn't have the sag in them. So that's, uh, so that's why you see them quite tight across the top and none of the usual sag on them. So that's, that's the lower section is done. We go on to the upper hole. Uh, now the hopper hole is quite one, one large piece in there which uh, makes it easy for build up, front ball, ball machine gun, uh, these looks to be the two drivers and uh, machine gunners and radio, radio operators hatches on the front section there, uh, mud, uh, light guards and the front lights. We then move on to joining the top hole once we put the little pieces on to the lower hole, more fixings. Now go on to the side track guards and the exhaust on there. No slide mold on that one, so you have to do a nice little bit of fillering and a bit of gluing possibly around the edges of that. It's not toolbox there, it doesn't open up, quite basic design with your tools on there. At least the tools are separate, which is quite good. Um, they aren't just one, mold, one molded on piece, so you get a nice bit of detail there. Stick your tracks, track guards on. Both sides. Then we move on to turret. Quite a nice shaped turret, the M47. Nice, nice shape and design. So you got to fix your the main gun uh, pinions on there. We've got some hatches to go on. All the hatches can be posed open or closed. Some smaller elements, some viewing glass. There's the rear turret bin. The front, uh, the commander's cupola on there. Again, you can pose that open or close if you wanted to. You've got your top 50 cal up there. 
Uh, we'll have to look at the instructions and see if that's slide molded. The main body is in two pieces, so it will need a little bit of a uh, careful gluing across the top there. I'm sure that'll come out nicely. Stick your barrel on. You get a good few different options of uh, into the barrel on there. You get the straight fitment, and what I'd sort of be seen as maybe like a World War II style um, end to that piece. You got the and then you have got the later what I'd call the American style, which looks to just be two bar a piece of bar put across and then a, a Y barrel end, which looks quite nice. I like them finishes. Uh, they're made up of multiple components down there. So you get to pick. What you do get to pick on here is whether you do, or you, to get it, so you do, or you don't have the um, dust cover for the mantlet. Um, now, if you do fix that piece on there, I can imagine it's ne then won't be movable. If you keep that one, and you can have it movable on there. I'd imagine some people on the aftermarket will probably come up with a, as you can see it's been glued there, they'll probably come up with a one piece resin mantlet, I'm sure at some point for that piece. Uh, now here comes the options for the turret. Now you've got the M47 there and there, and then you've got the M47G this side here. Most of, say, most of you saw earlier, most of the M47s, we have the bars running along the side and you cut off a load of little notches and the M47G has these smoke dispensers or smoke candles I think as they're called as well on the front end there and they have a slightly different setup with the grab handles on the side of the turret. Once that's all finished pop it together models done ready for paint. So let's get in to the plastic sprues. Okay, so let's have a look through this bundle of sprues. Um, I've got, I'll go do this in two sections so I don't have to keep changing over all the different parts and different areas. Um, I think we'll start with turret on this piece. So you've got the usual split piece turret there. Um, nice. Looks like that's gonna meet up quite nicely. We'll need a little bit of rework on there. These are cast turrets. So you will need to address the join there but it does meet up nicely it has got some nice texture on there i'll see if i can get this on the camera let's see if we can, let's see if we can try and pick some of this texture up on the camera i'll try and get it with that one and see if it's on the lights it's quite hard to see on there it's quite hard to see but it has actually got some very nice texture uh he's got the little dimples on there it's actually got the cast number Right at the end there. Just make that out there, you guys. There's the cast number. You can just see some of the casting marks that they've put in on the on the kit. So yeah, that looks good. I like that. I like that indeed. And the lower half of it again is the same cast texture all over. Uh, but when you when you join them up, you'll need to do a little bit of uh, detail across those parts. This goes to the lower hull and the jigs. Low hole nicely made. There's a production casting stamp on the front end there. All the detail of the lower hatches. Nice. There's a little mark there and a little mark there from the when it's been uh, injection molded. But it's on the lower hole. They're not going to be that hard to sort out if you need to, to be honest. It's a tank, it has mud. I'm sure a bit of mud could find its way down there. Um, all the hole markings are quite nice. There's some lovely sort of weld markings. You see those just running through here, running through there. They're really quite cool. They must be for, maybe for different variants and they, they can use the front half of the hole for a different style and the, rear half for something else but that's really quite cool I like that nice bit of molding on there now these are the two jigs that come in a kit uh, you can put your front rear dry sprockets and idler and you can put your tracks around there stick them on you've got the markings there for the uh, suspension arms to line them up with so great idea tack on nice little marker uh, let's go to the clear sprue I'm not I'm not gonna take them out of bag because they can it always end up getting a little bit damaged for the clear part, so I'm going to keep them in there. 
Now the, the clear for the glasses, I'll tell you now, they are really, really nice. Uh, the clear parts are absolutely wonderful. Spot on tack on, very, very nice parts indeed. And that one. Let's go to the top, top hole. Uh, now this is the, one of the main points on the top hole is that engine deck. The louvers have been done very, very well. And the, the holes within the louvers are deep enough so that you're not going to be looking at paint underneath. You look down there and it looks like they're completely open. So I must say, Tacom, that's very well molded. There must be a, there must be go quite deep inside there. There's some big injection lumps on the bottom of it, but that does not matter. You will never see them. If, it, if you have to put up with those on the bottom for that quality on there, that is superb. Very nice louvers on the back end. Really like that. Really like that indeed. Uh, you've got the two sides, mud uh, track guards on there. You've got some tight bins and toolboxes. There's the rear mufflers. There's the side bins for them. The hinge detail is actually quite nice on those parts there. Yeah. Some nice hinge detail on there. So you can quite easily happily just put a bit of a pin wash down those, make them look nice. Uh, same again on those front track guards. Nice hinges. Good work, good work. Uh, next sprue. Now this sprue here is F. Now this has the barrel for the main gun on there. Um, now this one, now this version with, without the dust cover is one piece. Not two halves joined together. So we need to do is uh, tidy up the little bit of a um the seam seam on the top and the bottom uh, but the version that has the dust cover is two halves so you have to glue that together um i can't see why they haven't been able to do this one same as that one not sure why there but hey ho there we go that's the way it is um some sm slightly small some very small little brush guards on there uh, nice design for the way they get the part of the, the sprue down to there. Some little pin marks, you get little injector marks you have to take off the edges. But nice small contact points to deal with. Uh, no real evidence of flash on anything. Some seam lines on little parts here and there, but nothing that's uh, that's going to not, not be able to deal with with a small sanding, a little bit of scraping on a knife. Yeah, no flash anywhere. Nice, nice there. That uh, last sprue here is the tracks themselves. Uh, now, one thing I did notice when I was taking it out are the track horns. Dig there. I'm gonna try and get that in the shot nicely. Just make out the track horns there. Yeah, there you go. Very sharp, very nicely done. There are some injector pin marks just make them out on the tracks there there are some you're gonna have to just tidy up with with a bit of sanding on there just see you can still like, see a bad one there but they're not deep they're really only on the surface so a little bit of a sanding and that should do you perfectly fine on there Let's flip them over and then that's the trackpad surface the outside surface is absolutely perfect very very nice detail yeah the tracks looks nice tracks do look nice again very small gates connections on all the tracks you can see how many gates there are on there to get that detail onto them now a little, little quick point you might notice with the tackons is their sprue letters which are actually punched out I actually quite like this on tackon because uh, their sprue gates are quite different they're, squ they're a square rectangular type and they punch the letters out on the top. So you're not just having to sit there, look for a box, and all the sprues have got a, in, uh, a raised letter that you can't really see very well. You can actually see them quite clearly when you look down. So that's a nice way of finding them. You haven't got huge multiple parts. You're not, it's not a huge worry, but it's a nice little, nice little feature on that one. Uh, so let's go through the rest of the parts. Okay, on to the last few sprues. Uh, now these are the wheels, there are actually two sprues of this. I've looked at both of them, both exactly the same, so I'm not gonna show them twice. I'll just show you through this one. 
Um, so yeah, let's start with this one. This, these are the road wheels on there. Uh, you also get another part for the exhaust on there with mounting brackets, so that would be the lower part. So you've got your road wheels on there. You've got some nice bolt head detail on the wheels there. Minimal cleanup for them. You've mainly just got the sprue gates to clean up on them there, so that is good. You've got the, the dry sprockets there. Let's turn them over so the faces look like. They've got, got raised, recessed deep bolt, bolt heads inside there. It's a bit hard to see on my light there, but they are inside there. Nice bolt head detail. Teeth are nicely done for there. The idlers on the top, very nicely done. Very nicely done, those. Uh, we've got the main suspension arms on there for some grab handles, um, which look to be nuts. They all look nuts down the edge there. You can cut them off and add them on. Uh, maybe it's called for it in the kit, or maybe you've damaged some when you're doing some of the work. So they are have been added there if you need to include them. Um, some jerry cans. Um, some more. These are the main lifting points. Some small more grab handles and some shock, shock absorbers. Shock absorbers are all one piece, so you don't have to join anything there. Uh, so that sprue's all good. Again, no flash or anything like that on that piece. Uh, let's go on to the sprue here, G. This has the dust cover for the mantlet on there. Quite nicely done. Now, on the old Tamir kits, you had to make this yourself. They said to use a piece of cellophane, some small amounts of masking tape, and to stick a bit of... Oh, it looked a complete nightmare. Uh, I do believe there was an aftermarket company that made a resin one, which made it much, much better. Um, but it's good that they include it in there. It's broken down into three pieces, so you will have to be very careful when sticking it together to make sure it's nice and neat. And if not, you'll just have to do a little bit of sanding, maybe touch, touch a little bit of uh, filling on there. Um, there you've got some suspension points, some of the parts for the barrel on there, the grab handles for the turret. Uh, nice, only starting just to spot a little bit of flash on that piece there. There's some flash on some of the gates on there, but that's the only part I've ever seen any flash so far. Um, not too much of a problem. They don't look too delicate, so it should easily be able to clean up. Uh, now there's the machine gun, the 50 cal for the top. Uh, unfortunately, no slide mold on the barrel, so cut it off, uh, to trim that off nicely and drill that out, and that should be perfectly fine i really can't see why they just didn't be able to make the whole machine gun in one piece why they had to join it for some reason they did there we go it's a shame they did because to be honest, this, the other side is lovely detailed and if they'd be able to get that all as one piece there you go. not the worst thing in the world last brew some hatches the ball machine gun for the front again no slide mold so cut that off drill that out and uh, some of the tools there's your shovel there very nicely detailed you got your axe some more lifting hooks more protecting uh, what looks to be uh, the clasp probably most probably for the um, no it has on there yeah I'm not sure I can't remember what I saw those parts for uh, and again right at the back of the sprue here just make that some more bolt heads. Now you've got large bolt heads and then you've got even smaller ones after it on there. Nice little touch tack on, thank you for that. So all in all, um, plastic's looking good, well detailed. Um, very, very, very minimal uh, flash, only evident on one sprue, which had some of the smaller uh, grab handles. Um, they're always one of the, I think, the hardest parts to make sure they're absolutely perfect when you're getting a kit. It's only only one part's got a little bit of flash. They'll need a little bit of clean up the other ones, but nothing more than a modeler would easily be able to do. Um, so I'd say, all in all, good plastic from Tackle. Okay, so that's what you get inside the box. Um, so an overall on the kit, I think very, very good. Um, it's a huge step forward from the old Tamir one. Uh, that, was, that must have been from uh, the 70s. Uh, the idea for the track guide and for the suspension guide, very good point. 
Um, it's a shame there wasn't some slide moulding on some of the machine gun barrels, but that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, there's, it's not a heavy part count kit, so this could be built up fairly easily within a weekend sort of work. I can imagine that can uh, could get built up and, and be ready for paint. Um, it's it's nice. It's a nice kit. Good amount of deco options and camo schemes in there for the modeler. So you don't, if if you want to do just the usual Amer American olive drab, perfect. Uh, if not, you get a lot of different options in there. Um, now, what, I, I may be wrong. I'm pretty sure it was they used to use these uh, when they used to make the World War Two films, uh, and they didn't have any uh, German armor to drive around. They used to paint uh, crosses and swastikas on these and drive them around pretending they were Germans. And I'm pretty sure it was the patterns they used. Um, so that could be quite something a bit different if you wanted to really uh, give it a different look. Um, but out of the box, well worth the, well worth the buy if you're interested in the, the M47 patterns. Uh, and it's a cracking looking, looking kit. Um, hope you enjoyed the inbox review. Uh, thank you for watching. See you again soon.